The new small form factor Ryzen stuff that's extremely efficient is finally here. The CPU has AI in the title. The mini PC has AI in the title. We're gonna take a look at the minis for them. This is the AI series X1 Pro. I've been using OEM keys since the XP day, so I'd be a hypocrite if I did not recommend OEM keys. Let me show you something right here. This is the Microsoft Store. That's the retail price. And now let's head over to whokeys.com. You can get Windows 11 Pro, but we have a little bit of a deal right here. See, there's like a 20% off. No, no, no. Let's, let's not do that. Let's get 25% off Windows 11 Pro. Once you get over here, we got a coupon code down here. Just type in TS25. Take a look at the price. $30.96. Let's hit apply. And now $23.22. That's the price I want to pay. You can also get the same deal on Windows 10 Pro. And at the time of making this video, Windows 10 Pro keys unlock Windows 11. Let's see what that comes down to. $17.61. You got Windows 10 Home. We got Windows 11 Home. And we also have a few different flavors of Office, like 2019 and 2016. If you're looking at like Office 365, it's one of those monthly never-ending things. $129 a year versus $99 a year. When you grab Office 2019 this way for only $53.56, it just activates and works, and there's no monthly fee. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. I'm gonna use TS25 here, and I'm gonna submit my order. 269, there we go, sweet. Yeah, sure, we'll save that. So after you make your purchase, just go ahead and extract your key. Go ahead and click on View Keys and Codes for the new one. All right, here we just need to press Start and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. That's okay. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key. Press Next and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Don't be messing around with those exorbitant retail keys. Grab an OEM key. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. When you first look at it, yeah, it's a little bit bigger than a lot of the mini PCs on the market. Now, there's a few things that are very interesting about this, and we'll get to the rest of the specs in just a second. I'm going to talk about its footprint on your desk. If you just set it flat, it's going to have a bigger footprint than most mini PCs. This comes with a nice solid stand, so you can turn it sideways, and then you can position it on your desk in all kinds of different ways. It may end up taking up less space when you make it vertical like that. There's a couple different things going on that make this a little bit bigger, and I'm actually happy about these choices. The power supply, instead of having a big old brick, well, that's internal now. No need for a big old brick. You just plug the power directly into the back using a cable. Next up, it's extremely quiet, and that's thanks to the larger cooling unit. And last but not least, we have three PCI Express 4.0 M.2 slots on the inside, and those are NVMe as well. So that's going to give it a little bit bigger of a desktop footprint. But like I said, set it up vertically, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and take a full look at this. I'll do some benchmarks with AI, but I'm going to test this as a regular computer as well because it's the next generation of the Ryzen stuff. So I'm going to see how that performs. So the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX 370. Let's talk about that. I'll get this out of the way right now. I hate the name. It's very confusing. All the naming schemes have gone weird now and everything has to have AI in the title. But this does have an AI processing unit, an MPU as they call it, and it can do 50 tops. That's 50 trillion operations per second. But this is a little bit different than the Ryzen cores of the past because now we kind of have the big core, little core thing going on. But I don't know, not, not as much as like Intel. There's still like kind of big core, less big core because all the cores are hyper-threaded. So here's the way it's laid out. You get four of the Zen 5 cores, and then you have eight Zen 5C cores, which are like the lower power cores, giving you 12 cores in total, but all those are hyper-threaded. So that's a little different than the way Intel does their stuff. These are all a little beefier, and you get up to 24 threads. So do we have multiple frequencies to play with here? So everything, the base is two gigahertz, which is nice if you wanna like just be chilling in your browser or whatever, you don't need all that power. The Zen 5C cores will boost up to 3.3 gigahertz. However, the first four cores will boost all the way up to 5.1, and those are the Zen 5 cores. We have 24 megabytes of L3 cache and 12 megabytes of L2 cache. So this one is configured at 28 watts, but you can get the CPU um, you'll see them in different implementations from 15 watts to 54, but yeah, this one's showing up as, as 28 watts. So now we have the support for AVX 512, uh, I guess instruction sets or whatever. Basically, it's a 512-bit pathway for having multiple instructions delivered at the same time. Now, if programs take advantage of that, like a lot of video editors and stuff like that, video editing programs and just 3D programs, if and when they start to take advantage of that, we'll see a bigger delta between this generation and last. But I'll tell you right now, there's not that big of a difference. It's very minimal. Uh, and you'll see in the tests, which are coming up in just a second. The rest of the specs, so we got the Radeon 890M. It's, it's a little bit better than the 780M, and we'll test it against that in just a second. Let's have a look at the ports. We got right there on the front, we got our power button. Uh, also on the top, there's a fingerprint sensor for logging in and everything. We have two USB uh, type A right there, then we got a USB four, and then we have our headphone jack right there, headphone combo jack. You see that right there? That's an embarrassing Microsoft Copilot button on the outside. 
kind of an eyesore. Hopefully this will be obsolete in a few years and we'll all have a good laugh about it. But right now, because this has over 40 tops, it's got 50 tops of performance when it comes to AI. Well, we have to stare at that stupid looking button right there. It's going to be on keyboards too. Fun. <laughs> right on the back, starting from the right, we've got two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. We have HDMI, DisplayPort, another USB 4. Beside that, that's Oculink. And Oculink will allow you to connect an external dock or something. This is pure PCI Express. So you essentially have a PCI Express port right there on your on the back. Plug it up to a dock, put a graphics card on there, and they say you can get up to 90% of the power of the graphics card. So if you want to use this as a gaming rig and do some like extreme gaming or 4K gaming or 1440p AAA gaming or whatever, this can already do most of your indie games and a lot of the AAA games from I don't know, a few years ago, but if you want like the latest, greatest, fastest thing, use the Oculink port with external graphics. And then beside that we have USB 2, and there's our Kensington lock. And then below that we just have our two-prong power connector. Again, no brick, it's all internal. So taking this thing apart was um, not easy. I'm pretty sure that this is the team that they had putting screws into this thing. Those things were tight. Like, really difficult to get out. There were two that were almost impossible to get out, but I too am strong as a, a small ox and was able to remove these screws. But yeah, whoever you've got putting these screws in these things, minis form, they're doing maybe too good of a job. <laughs> anyway, after I finally removed all the screws, of which there are many to take out, I was greeted with a sled. And then once I removed that sled, I was greeted with like a big metal bracket that goes over top of everything. It's got the fans and everything. Once I removed all the screws and then removed that, we could finally see what's on the inside there. You can see we have two sticks of crucial memory, DDR5 5200 mega transfers. And then we have those three slots for the PCI Express Gen 4 M.2. One of them is already populated, of course, and that one has a heat spreader already installed and they've included an extra heat spreader if you want to install one in one of the other ports. If you want to do three, then maybe get another heat spreader. I don't know. So taking this thing apart was doable, but it was not that easy compared to some units. All right, so let's take a look at Geekbench. Our single core score, 2959, and our multi-core score, 15453. I'll scroll down so you can see all the individual test scores right here. Uh, and also, I uh, do apologize, my HDMI capture has been weird, so it looks okay right now, but it's gonna start getting fuzzy here in just a second. I think it's time to replace it. OpenCL score, 34803. And I'll scroll down again so you can see all. All right, so is it worth upgrading if you have like an 890M system or a 780M system, you know, Ryzen 7840HS, maybe? but maybe not. It depends on what you're doing. If you're doing all kinds of AI stuff and whatever, maybe. Uh, I don't use any of that stuff. I don't really like a lot of that stuff. So for me, the couple extra FPS for gaming is not really that big of a deal. I do like all the options we have here, like being able to install many, uh, many, many, many hard drives. Uh, the fast memory, like this supports faster memory than a lot of the last generation. Having that 5600 mega transfer memory is nice. So yeah, it's, it's an upgrade. You know, would I upgrade from last generation? It, like I said, depends on what you're doing. But as far as the implementation goes, and if you don't already have a mini PC and you're looking at one, this one should be something I think you consider because the build quality is there. The form factor is cool. I love the fact that you can set it up vertically. Again, vertical things take up less real estate than stuff that's laying flat, as long as it's smaller in that dimension, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I like the way they have this set up. I like the options. Oculink's fine with me. Well, let's talk about some new games you can play on this. Do you remember Hyper Light Drifter? Well, there's a new game out, Hyper Light Breaker. Now, this is a full-on 3D game, and I don't have too many things to compare it to because I don't play a lot of games that are like this, but there's kind of a hub world, and you go and clear the enemies in different worlds that are that are connected, but it has a really interesting aesthetic. If it looks a little stuttery on the HDMI, sorry about that. I, it's um, HDMI has been performing very strangely lately, like the HDMI capture, but it's running nice and... Nice and smooth over here. Probably not going to get too far into this game, but if you like the aesthetic and the style of this kind of game, then maybe this will be something for you and it does work pretty well. The game world's really pretty, cool and stylized, but not like, uh, I don't know, it's got a kind of a cell shaded look to it. All your modern mechanics are there, like your dash. Oh, let's check this out. All right, so yeah, a lot of this, a lot of grindy stuff. If this looks like something you'd play, then be my guest. It's not really a game for me, but it is really well made and looks really pretty and very interesting. All right, let's take a look at Valley. We're running at 1080p on the high quality preset. Our score is 33.98 and the FPS was 81.2 with a minimum of 38.2. For reference, I've tested many, many 780M uh, GPUs that are you know, found on the Ryzen 9 CPUs, the Ryzen 7 CPUs, like the 7940HS, and also the Ryzen 9 8945H, which is basically identical. So how much faster is this? Well, the fastest of those was 
3 FPS. The fastest of those was 75.3 FPS, so it's a tiny bit faster. Our score is 3398. The fastest of those again was 3150. All right, so it's been a minute. I tried out a couple of these models to see how they were, and we'll take a look right now. First off, when you get into this LM Studio, click on Developer right there, and then click on LM Runtimes, then click on Model Search, and you want to just type in DeepSeek. AMD recommends that you use models that say, that say Q4 underscore K underscore M. So look for those, and we want to use Quinn. I'm not sure what any of this means, really. I'm not really an AI person, but I was curious to try a few of these out. So I grabbed a 7B version. I grabbed a very small version, like a one gigabyte version. And then I also grabbed 14B, which is the one that says the maximum that is supported. Doesn't mean that's the one you should use. I'll show you how fast they are. So I wanted to ask it a very, uh, I guess, simple, but you know, interesting question. Since I use it to categorize all of my stuff, I wanted to have it make a table for me. And I'm asking it, hey, who made these games? I want to know the genre, I want to know the operating system, key developers, music composers, and all that. And here's the games I gave it. The 14B model right here, it thought about this question for 2 minutes and 26 seconds. So yeah, there you go. And then down here it gave me correct answers. Windows 95, Windows, Windows 3.1, it gave me correct answers. These are correct. Okay, good. Let's take a look at the 7B. How fast was that one? Well, this one I asked the same question. It thought for one minute and 19 seconds. Okay, everything's correct on a lot of this. Action RPG? No, no, it's just FPS. And what's action RPG? I have to, see, I have to waste my time changing this. Um, no, the Bobby Prince. Music unknown. So I asked the same question on a very small model. This is the uh, 1.5B, just very small. This one thought for 8.34 seconds and then gave me all the wrong answers. So I don't find this to be reliable. All right, apparently, uh, I'm a protagonist, and uh, my signature weapon is the Kill Stone. Don't mess with me. I control the Kill Stone. AI slop, anyway you slice it. The 14B model does work, but it takes a little bit of time. So, you know, you can come up here and load up your different things. We got the 14B right here. Make sure when you're doing it, you just pull this all the way over, all your GPU offload. Yes, indeed. So, really, I think it's going to be up to you. Um, I mean, it's as fast as it gets when it comes to many PCs. So if the price is okay with you, I think it's definitely good enough to get. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the comments.